Hello, I am Lisa Berenger. Welcome to Reporter de l'Au-delà, which means Reporter of the Afterlife. And today I have the great pleasure to receive a trans medium, an extraordinary trans medium from the UK, and her name is Ellen Torp. And she will do us the great honor of channeling her guide, Jonathan Hunter, so that I can ask him questions about the afterlife. It's really going to be a great moment. So thank you very much for being here, Hélène. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me on. <laughs> uh, so as I said, you are a trans medium, but you are also a spiritual artist. Yeah, that's, that's right. I, I love to paint with spirit. Mm -hmm. But I say I turn the music on and, and it seems to, to bring about a connection between me and, and them. And they inspire me to to paint and sometimes to add things to my painting, like a sort of, sort of debage or collage. And and sometimes souls appear in the painting. So I, I love it when that happens. You know, I ask them to come mm. and join me, Spirit of the Light, and, and then the souls appear in the paintings. It's it's lovely to look at, you know, sometimes too many appear in there, but they will show some will show themselves more than others. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I've sold quite a few over the years. I started in 2014, and um, ever since then, it's been like an addiction. I can't, <laughs> can't see the stuff now. I love it. Can people buy your painting? Yes, they can. I, I sell them all over the world, you know. It's, um, oh, I think one went to China, um, Finland, um, Germany. Some some have been to Ireland, they've been to America, all over the place. Oh, that's really wonderful. We can find it on your site, on your website. Yes, um, some of the paintings I've previously sold are on the website, but most of them are on my Facebook page. Ah, okay. Um, you can see them all on there. Mm -hmm. And each time I do a new one, I'll, I'll add it, and then I add it to my, my group, Facebook group. Okay. So that's, um, yeah, so they're, they're all on there for you to look at on my main page. If anybody wants to, to take a look or they like a painting done, that all they need to do is, is message me and, and uh, through email or, or text or they can get in touch with me on Facebook. Then that, that's the easiest way, the, the Facebook and the uh, website, mm -hmm. which um, is on there. So, yes, uh, there are several ways that you can get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. Emails, um, I don't always get the time to look at them, but I do check them out every now and again. So there is still a chance I, I will get to look at the long list of other emails that come <laughs> through. Um, you know, you're welcome to get in touch with me whatever way is possible with you. Okay, I, I will give the links of your page and your website uh, below on the comments. So uh, I was asking you <laughs> uh, if you ever been to France. Yes. When I was a very young girl with my parents, I, I came to France, but um, I haven't been for a long, long time. So maybe one day I'll, I'll get to go again. It's not too far from us, only overseas. Yeah, so. Um, and where have you been in yeah. France? Oh, goodness me, I think I can remember now. Uh, I think uh, it was when my parents used to go to the, the duty-free places years ago, the big supermarkets over there. Okay, I, I used see. to go then. Um, I only went a couple of times and not very often. In Brittany, maybe? I'm not very good with boats, I'm afraid. Uh, okay. That's a good occasion for the French people to know you better. I'm sure they will. Yeah, I get over there much easier than you, you used to be able to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a Eurostar now, isn't there? There wasn't yeah, back yes, then in the 1980s. So, you know, the only way you could get over there was on a boat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Airplane. So uh, for those who do, do not know what is a trans medium, could you explain it to us? Trans medium is is where you go into a relaxed state of mind. It's it's, it's self hypnosis sort of thing. So you may do it quietly, or you may sit with others in a development group, or you may um, 
meditate and go into that state of mind. Um, it, it's best to sit with people that know about it. If you're going to begin it, um, it's best to sit with somebody that knows so they can keep an eye on you. Mm-hmm. But this is, this is about once you've gone into this relaxed state, your aura widens, which mm-hmm. is what I, I call mm-hmm. energy, but it, it widens. And, and then the guide will step into that energy and manipulate it. And, and then they learn to use your vocal cords mm. so that their thoughts are impressed into your mind to be spoken into physical voice. So I guess that they're, they're kind of adjusting your vocal cords and, mm. and moving them about a bit spiritually so that they can use them simply because um, unless you've got a direct voice medium in, in a circle, mm. then this is another easier way that they can come through to us directly through a medium in trance you see so it's 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 very much like hypnosis but done in, in a different way mm. because with hypnosis you you've got uh, self hypnosis just to relax yourself mm. and um you've got hypnotherapists that relax you and take you into that state of mind but this is this is kind of different because once you've taken yourself into that relaxed state they then take over with your permission to to go into that state of mind to bring trance forward you see to bring the spirit forward mm. oh, yeah. it's a nice experience it yeah i don't think it's anything to be afraid of um it can be feel a little bit strange um at first your your mind and body need to adjust to that sort of thing mm. and, and over time the the spirit gets used to your energy um because you're more of um, a physical energy they have to slow down their vibrations so that they can join us and we're probably um physical density of energy and and they're light beings so they have to try and maneuver a physical body again so that must be quite hard for them and and it takes time for them to learn it and for you to control it and and um trust in yourself and the guy so uh, that's what it's like it can take it can come along quickly it can take many years it, it oh, depends on really how, how the guide mm-hmm. is, is blending with the medium and and how the medium is is trusting you know and letting go it it doesn't mean to say that you have to be in a deep state of trance but i'm completely out of it mm-hmm. to be in that trance because i can hear my guide speaking mm-hmm. and um the majority of trance mediums can hear their guides speaking unless you've got kind of a physical medium which most of the time they go into deep states of trance and go out of body somewhere mm. but with with trance um some people can't hear they go off to sleep and then the guy takes over completely and starts to learn to speak but in most cases they they do hear but you've got no control over what they say so it's um different states of mind that you'll go into, um, different levels of the trance that you'll go into. Whatever you feel comfortable with being in, then the guy will work with that. And if you are meant to go into a, a deep state of trance, they'll perhaps do it gradually and, and allow you to become accustomed to it without being taken to a, a place where you don't feel comfortable with. But it do take you to nice places of course but it, it feels a bit strange so you've got to trust it and adjust to it and did it take you time to trust uh, your guide yes a long time um oh. i did question him a lot i told him off a lot and and uh, i felt sorry for him really because you know <laughs> they do get the blame for things um i did ask him to give me evidence and things so if you ask your guide to give you signs and evidence that they're around, then they will work on providing that to you. And you don't need to go looking for the signs. It's strange. You kind of glance across somewhere and a little sign will be there and you weren't even thinking about it. So it's usually when you least expect it that they'll send you a sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's really amazing. So for... For those who do not know you very well, uh, could you tell us more about yourself, your your story, your your background? 
your family? My background, when, when I came up to uh, join my father here in, in Kent, mm-hmm. um, I was about 14, I came here, mm-hmm. and um, and my foster mother, mm-hmm. and he lived with her, and unbeknown to me, he was, uh, he had been sitting in a circle with a lady and developing trance and very quickly turned to physical mediumship and i used to from the age of 15 occasionally i used to go and sit in his circle and it would all be blacked out Mm -hmm. Uh, i'd sit with him and the trumpet would fly around the room with with luminous paint on it the toys would land in your lap things would move at, at speed you know it was it was a wonderful experience and when i first sat there i thought well it's pitch dark in here we're all in here um we've left all our stuff in the bedroom we couldn't take anything in with us and i thought well there must be someone on the end of that trumpet if um if there is the human hand would cover it you would cover the the Mm -hmm. luminous paint but there wasn't there wasn't any hand Mm -hmm. covering it so i knew it was real Mm -hmm. i just felt so comfortable sitting amongst that a bit a little bit uneasy to start with when they came to you but Mm -hmm. You know, off on and off, I used to sit with Dad because I had school and that and to get on with and homework. So in those days, he used to travel off and do his thing. And, and he worked right up until 1998 when he got too ill to do it after that. Mm. And so it wasn't until, oh, 2005 that I actually went off to Ireland for a holiday just for a few short days and my my father-in-law had previously passed away a few years before back in oh, 1995 he passed so I asked him on a last night at the hotel I, I said to him can you send me a sign that you're here that the uh, the children gone to bed in the next bed to and, and we were two double beds in this little hotel room. And I thought, well, nothing's going to happen. So I'll, I'll just drift off to sleep, see if I can get to sleep, relax. Well, a few minutes after I'd relaxed, I, I hadn't really gone into a, a proper sleep. It was like a semi-sleep. Mm. And all of a sudden, I, I must have been laying on my tummy, felt my tummy be pulled in. And all of a sudden, this apparently very loud voice kind of bellowed out of my voice box and tried to talk to my husband at the time that was laying next to me. I think it scared the the daylight out of them all because apparently it was loud, but to me it wasn't. It was a a quiet whisper, but it was absolutely amazing. So I I was um, a little bit daunted by it, but I was also intrigued by it. I thought, wow, you know, what happened there? I must find out. So my first thought was to ring my mother's friend who was a hypnotherapist and, and I didn't know she, she used to sit for trance herself. So I thought I'd just ring her and ask her. And she said, oh, it's trance. So I said, well, what's trance? She said, well, it's, it's something to do with what your father does, but a little bit different. And I can recommend if you want to develop it that um, you join this group. So she gave me the lady's name and I went and sat at her house and at first I felt a little bit uneasy with the meditation class so I thought well I don't know if I can get on with this I don't know if it's for me you know so I, I went back to the trance evening class and there was a few of them sitting there and I was introduced to them it was only a small group there must be about six six of us in there plus the the lady that owned the house and She put the music on and she didn't really talk to us much about uh, what we were doing. She gave me sort of an outline of what it was about. And then she put the music on and and experimented to see what comes through with any of us. And um, well, I had the first thing for me was George came through and I thought, well, I don't know any George. And he seized my body up. Everything felt all tight and uncomfortable. I thought, well, if this what is what trance is about, I don't know if I want to know. It makes me uncomfortable. So I said to them, well, if you're going to use me, um, don't bring your previous life illnesses with me or your ailments. Just um, come as you are, you know, at peace. And from then on, that happened. 
I, I said this point in time, I didn't know about any guides. Never knew about my guide. Never even knew he existed. She hadn't really told us about guides. It's just it was all kind of an experiment. And then I thought, well, one of my friends next door one day, she invited me in. And she said, well, all my friends are gone now. Can you do your trance thing? I said, well, oh, I don't know. I said, I've only been doing it a few months. I'm not sure. So she said, oh, well, I'll look after you. I thought, well, you don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So I, I chanced it and, and went into trance. And from this day, I have no idea who came through prior to my guide showing the end. And he suddenly introduced himself at the last he said hello my name is Jonathan and and I am the spirit guide of Elaine and my whole body sparkled lit up you name it It, I never felt so much love and I thought wow you know this is amazing feeling I haven't felt this ever in my life is this the trance is this how you're supposed to feel really and it just lit up my soul like my whole being and I've, I can't even begin to explain how I felt. It was like little stars twinkling inside your body. It was like you were so happy, so happy. And I went out of there feeling amazed. Well, from there on, he sh- showed up in the group and started to learn how to speak. Mm. Well, at first he used just my normal voice, which sounds, when I listened back to it, it sounded a bit like no expression to the voice. Mm. It was just normal, but with a little bit like a robot speaking like a no expression and over time as as time went by he started to learn to speak mm-hmm. and uh, then when I joined my own circle he came forward a little bit more and mm-hmm. oh yeah others would come through as well my twin would come through yeah. and but most of the time now it's him and how he adjusted my voice I have no idea um it just seemed to happen over time. It's a little bit like if a teenage boy's voice starts to break, mm-hmm. it goes a little bit higher, then it drops lower. It was a little bit like that when I listened back to the recordings and then over time it, it stayed like it is now. That's really amazing, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I was a bit worried about it at first because I thought, well, if anybody hears that, what are they going to think? You know, so that's your first immediate thought is what are people going to think over time? I thought, well, it, it's not the usual everyday thing. And mm-hmm. I began to get used to it and feel comfortable with it. And I tried to relax as much as I could, but it took a long time. It, it really did take a long time for, for me to adjust to him coming through and the trust. It, Sometimes there's still things that I doubt and hold back on, but that's that's human nature, yeah. No, oh, yes, of course. Did you always knew that you was a medium? That you were a medium? No. No. I didn't. I used to put um I used to put recordings on in, in when my daughter was a baby. I thought, well I'll experiment one day. Mm-hmm. So I asked for the house to be protected while I went out. And I went out and I left an old-fashioned tape recorder on. Mm. When I came back, I thought, right, okay, I'll sit here and play it back. And at first it was kind of just a white noise on there. Mm. And um, after that, well, it was just like somebody in another uh, dimension had turned the tape on all over again and sped it up for about three or four seconds, like they'd sped up their voice. Mm. And I thought, well, I can't slow it down to hear what they're saying. And then they took a breath at the end. And then nothing, just went quiet. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I, I thought, well, there's something in my house, you know. So, <laughs> well, I've got spirits in here, but are they good? Are they bad? You know, what are they? And I, I said, well, please God protect my house and with the angels and everything else. Yeah. So one day I did it again and took my daughter out for an hour there's no one in the house and all of a sudden I come back my twins voice was on there calling out my daughter's name and playing with her toys and then these huge feet ran through my bedroom and then silence but your twin she she died when she was young 
yeah, she passed away as, as a baby at nine months old. <sighs> she had diabetes, which led her to fall into a coma and, mm. and unfortunately she went blind and, and mm. passed the spirit in the hospital, you know. Yeah, okay. So it's a, a long, long time ago now. So a question that I must, lots of people must ask to themselves, how do you feel when you are blending with Jonathan? Do you feel something different in your body? I mean, some, is there a special sensation? Uh, when, I, when I listen to the music and go into trance, mm -hmm. I start to feel them around. I start to see things in my mind's eye, like I, I, I see the woods and the trees, the forest, mm -hmm. and then I kind of see him come out and say hello to me. Mm -hmm. And he's, he'll say, are, are you ready? And I'll, I'll say yes, and he'll take my hand. And, and then I start to feel, sometimes if I put certain pieces of music on, I get cold shivers all through my body. It just feels like I'm freezing for a few moments. It's kind of, it's like the, the people sit in the power, don't they? And, and um, it's a little bit like that. You feel it going right through you and, you know they've arrived then. You don't always feel it, but it's it just sometimes there. You've, the music kind of powers you up, so to speak, and it, and it, oh, it's a wonderful feeling. When it joins me, I feel loved, I, I feel protected. I feel totally safe with him. It's just, I don't think there's anything you can't trust, but I still questioned it, and then I thought, wow. Why not? Because in my heart, I know this is right. In my heart, I know that he's, he's off the line. So I asked him to come to me in a dream. And I waited 10 years. Mm. 10 years, and he finally appeared in this dream. And, and I th he came towards me. He had a silver tray in his hand. He was all dressed up in Victorian cravat and everything. Mm. He, looked, he looked absolutely handsome. And... He had this silver tray, but it was tilted to the left. And I thought, and he had a little tea light on the tray, which was lit. And I thought, we were kind of looking like, a, you know, one of those servants with the trays in your hand. He smiled at me and he, he thought, well, you need to understand the message I'm trying to give you here. Mm -hmm. the, the tilted tray was the mistrust because I thought, well, you're going to drop that in a minute. The tea light was to say, trust me, I am from the light. Oh. And I thought, wow, that is absolutely incredible. So from then on, he started sending me signs. The last two, three years, he's been sending me signs. He sent me his surname on the side of a, an articulated lorry in huge letters, Jonathan, uh, his first name, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And then on, on bags, I've seen his surname. On, on uh, cranes and things, I've seen his surname when I've gone into London. Mm. You know, it's amazing. There's other things as well that, you know, I could tell you about. Mm. Uh, and when uh, your voice uh, changes to a male voice, uh, do you feel something special in your throat? It feels like a, like a heaviness. You know, when women speak, our voices are, are light uh, and we don't feel any heaviness or deepness mm. with it. And, and then all of a sudden, I feel like I'm speaking up here, but it feels like he's speaking down here and into my chest. Yeah, okay. Mm. So I think he says that he picks all the deeper tones out of the woman's voice and uses them and kind of does something with it. I don't know what he does with it. And when but did I you see... <laughs> it doesn't hurt or anything. Oh, it, it's, okay. it's quite fine. Yeah. And when did you see him for the first time? I, you fell him first since you fell him in trans medium mediumship. But when did you see his face? Or I saw his face. I think right from the beginning. Uh, <gasps> it was just I kind of knew what he looked like. Even my daughter said to me. When she saw a painting that my friend had done of him, mm -hmm. she said, I knew he looked like that one. She said, I, I just knew. 
and she's quite you know spiritual so she she knew and other people said it too they said that well that's how I imagined him to be you know so I, I knew right from the beginning I thought well I can see what you're like I, I kind of recognize you anyway it's, it's really strange how you already know and then one day I was in in the trance mm. and this most unexpected thing happened it was like he was testing me and I th it was such a quick flash of it. I could see this old man with a beard. And like you do, the, you know the long beards, like the wizard's look out of Harry Potter or something. Mm -hmm. And the long grey hair. And then he suddenly blurted out. And I could see him sitting in this modern kind of extension, you know, like a, a lean-to. And he was sitting in there chatting away to somebody but i don't know who this man and he suddenly blurted out jonathan what did you expect i thought were well, you trying to tell me here you know and so he was trying to say that you take everything in your world as, as visual you may hear a beautiful voice and see an old face attached to it you may hear a horrible voice and see a young face attached to it you go by visual you go by what you hear is what you expect to see so I could present myself in any way that I wanted to and would you still feel the same way about the situation so I think that's what he was trying to tell me that in your world you expect something to be perfect when it, it, it isn't we, we we come through as we are, but I said, oh, well, I said, well, what are you then? An old man with a great beard? He said, <laughs> well, no, I come to you as I am. But I, I changed the way that I looked, you know, to say that, you know, if this was presented like this, would you still feel the same way about it? I said, well, yeah. I said, because it's the soul that's within, isn't it? And he said, that's right. So I thought, well, that's an amazing way. It just came from nowhere. <laughs> And beside the trans mediumship, uh, do you see and hear spirits around you without being in trance? I I hear that sort of thing when I'm, you know, you know when you get into bed and, and most people do. Mm. They, If you're going to go into a relaxed state preparing to go to sleep, you may just be laying there, you're not actually asleep. You kind of prepare to go to sleep and you can hear different things going on. You, you may hear random things spoken to you or a name called out randomly and it's sometimes it's really really clear mm. and it doesn't happen every night but it just sometimes um, i'm drifting and i can hear things crackles in inside my ears going and and a voice is sometimes speaking a random word and, and i think oh who's that <laughs> yeah but you you just lay there but you don't make an attempt to kind of sit up and say what was that you kind of just lay there in a relaxed state and then after a while you drift off to sleep you've heard them speaking mm. i heard my mother call out my name and she just shouted out elaine and, and it was her voice it was so clear me too i heard my mother calling my name once she passed away three years ago and i heard she called me and i recognized her voice too it's lovely, isn't it, to hear their voice? Oh yeah. There was but the first sound. thing I thought is, well, is there something wrong? Why have you called out my name? Is there something wrong? You know. <laughs> yeah. Early in the morning, it woke me up, but I recognised her voice right away. It was from. Oh, that's that's lovely, isn't it? Oh. You no, know, because your mother's your best friend, aren't they? Yeah. So as I said, you are a spiritual artist, too. So uh, when you are painting, are you in trance? Um, no, I'm not in trance. Um, I kind of turn the music on and go into my own mm. world that is thinking about them and, and how I perceive them to be. And I suppose they, they join me and inspire me. Mm. The, the music is the best thing. For me to paint to music, it, it kind of sets me off tuning into them and music's so important to me it's such an important part of my life mm. it's every day <laughs> every day I, and i've always got music going on in my head in my mind so i can tune in at any time and start the art but i have to feel in the right mood to do it 
Mm -hmm. I've sometimes gone to do something and it's, it's not gone right and I've got frustrated with it. But there was one time that I, I started to do something and I thought I had an idea and I thought, well, this will work. And I don't know what I did. I mixed something up and it turned into a, a mess, a total, utter mess. And I thought, well, I can either throw this away, spirit, because I'm totally frustrated. It looks like a pile of mush. Uh, and, and they said, no, don't throw it away. Out of something terrible comes something beautiful. Mm. There's like a message mm. to say that all the, uh, some of the bad things that happen on earth, although you may see them as terrible, they turn into something beautiful in the end. Mm. So out of the negative comes the positive, basically. That was what they were trying to say to me. And, and then I thought, right, I'll let it dry and see what happens. And I thought, well, this, oh, I can see things in it. I can see trees. I can see colours, blues and grey. So I started to add them in. And, and it looked beautiful in the end. And then this little angel appeared into it, flying through the trees. I thought, oh, there's something. The message has come true. It was, it was uh, something horrible, dirty and ugly turned into something beautiful. Mm. That's wonderful. So can, can we ask some questions to Jonathan? Are yeah, you sure you can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. I, I mean, I can turn the music on and, and go into trance, you know. The music it only lasts a minute or two, but it makes it easier to, mm -hmm. to go into trance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you ready? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Take your time. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the music on there. It doesn't always go through, but you should be able to. Okay. It did have it set up on here. But okay. Hello, my dear. Oh, hello, Jonathan. That's such a pleasure to receive you today. The feeling is mutual. I thank you. First of all, can you tell us where you were born and what was your life on Earth? Yes, most certainly. I was born in 
Highbury, Islington in London in 1845. And my life on earth was much of an ordinary life, but there were good times and, and not so good times in it, much like anybody else's daily life. But of my 45 years that I lived until 1891, I spent much of my life doing what most people did. As I grew up in London, I would live and go to school. But uh, my schooling was mostly private once my mother could uh, live the life that she wanted to live, you see. So I had uh, elocution lessons was taught how to walk with a book on my head. <laughs> I went to church on a Sunday, you see, and, and sometimes we would have a little get together. We would have high tea in the afternoon and a weekend, yes. But as I grew into a, a young man, my father was going to teach me how to ride the horse and how to control the carriage, you see, because he was going to build a business which enabled us to live a, a well, a very good life. And so from day to day, I would learn how to use a, a cart and then I would build up to horses with a carriage. And until we were able to, to get together other workers that would do all of that for us. And so then I came back in order to be more of doing the the paperwork side of things for my father, you see. So quite often, if someone became unwell, I would add to working with him again and go out and help. So, yes, that was mostly what happened in my life. I would take part in, in funerals sometimes with funeral cortages, with the carriages. And it was a, a hard working day, but it, it was worth it, yes, for the life that we lived. And we were able to then in, employ maids in the home. I think that we had about uh, three or four of them and butlers. And so we were living a very good life. And, and so my father employed them, you see. And then Mary Ann Ellsworth was to come from the north into London to find work with her auntie, whom she resided with in London for a period of time. And she came to work under uh, our name, you see, under my roof where I lived and resided. Of course, you see, most of the time I lived in another quarters with my good lady wife. But when I met Mary Ann Ellsworth, it was like I had met myself in, in a female form, so to speak. <laughs> and, and she is sitting here now as a lady. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So you see, I have informed her about uh, St. Mary's Church in Islington, where I was married. Mm -hmm. I was married at quite a young age, in, in my uh, early 20s, I do believe, mm -hmm. to my good lady wife, Alice. And I had two children, Stephen and uh, Paul, I do believe. Yes. I had a good life, but I did not live a long life, my dear. At the age of 45, I was to pass with a heart attack in the cobbled streets. Oh. Did you believe in God and heaven when you were on earth? Well, I was to go to church every Sunday because it was mostly tradition then, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. in, in Victorian times, most people would go to church on a Sunday. They would go to a Catholic church or they would go to a, a Christian church. And, and my mother was Christian in those days. So as, as a boy, I would go to church on a Sunday and we would dress up in our Sunday best, although I had to be smart all of the time, but we would go in our Sunday best and, and to the church and sing hymns to, to God and Jesus and, and read the Bible. We had to do all of that. But as, as I got older, I, I looked to the Bible a little less because I had a busy life. 
But I would sometimes, if I felt a little uh, needy, I would go to the Bible and ask God to help me in some way. So it was mostly the, the Christian life that we led and uh, uh, we would have the burial within the church that we were most nearest to. So where are you? So I was uh, uh, married and, and buried in the same church, but of course, with the, the bombing of the St. Mary's Church in, in the Second World War, I suppose a lot of the, the graves would have been uh, desecrated, you see, along with the part of the building. Okay, I see. So were you surprised when you went on the other side to see how it was really? Yes, it, it, after having a, a seizure, a heart attack, mm. I came out of my body. I felt myself very high up above my body and, and the people were attending to me and, and waiting for a doctor to come. Mm. Of course, in those days, they didn't have uh, ambulances as such. Everything was horse and carriage, so they, you know, that would be done that way, you see. And so it, it was too late because I had already left my body and it was very quick passing. And so my body lay there in the street with people surrounding me, trying to help me and, and trying to wake me up. But unfortunately, I had passed. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing that they could do to save me because with, without modern technology that you have in your day and age, there was nothing that they could do. And so when I turned, I, I felt something very warm and inviting, pulling me towards it, a, a beautiful, warm and encompassing light. Mm -hmm. And in it was my grandmother. She had previously passed, quite a few years previously. And, and she said, Jonathan, it is your time to come home now. Mm -hmm. and, and she took my hand. And, and we walked into the light together. And then she seemed to disappear. So, and so then I was placed in front of what you would call God, which is a being of all-encompassing love, and unconditional love and power. Light surrounds that. And I was looking at my life, all of the life from birth until death that I had lived. And I had lived a pretty good life, but there were things that I could have corrected in some way or another. Yes. It was wonderful to be home. It, it felt just like home. It felt like I'd never left the place. That's wonderful. So Jonathan, I would like to ask you a few questions about mediumship. Could you tell us what's the contact process between spirits and the medium? How do they connect with the medium's body and energetic field? Well, as Elaine was previously explaining, because I was standing listening, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm a little nosy. <laughs> but uh, I would say that she allows her energy to be expanded, which is the auric field, as you call it, or the aura. But I prefer to call it energy, widening. Mm -hmm. And, and then I will wait and step into that energy and maneuver it with my energy and her energy together. It is being maneuvered. And, and then we will use a little bit of uh, ectoplasm, so to speak, to oh. put into the vocality to adjust it somewhat, to use the physical voice. So we will manipulate it mm. with the energy that is given to us and the energy that we blend with. Our energy, Elaine's energy. And so the two marry together and, and become one, and, and we are manipulating that energy and learning to speak through it. Oh, that's amazing. How do spirits know that someone is a medium? Is there we know because we, we are in spirit and we know what they have chosen. Ah, okay. There's not something in the aura that the that spirits can see or something like that? We see you as light, yes. When, when you call us to come and join you in, in your circles, in, in your groups that you sit in, or with a, with a medium that is going to be giving readings as such or healing, mm -hmm. we see the light that you give to us to invite us into, and then we will come and join you. Okay. And when a medium dies, 
is she or he still involved in mediumship, such as helping other mediums or maybe becoming a gatekeeper, for instance? Yes, many from the other side of mediums that had passed previously mm -hmm. will come to uh, these mediums and do what they can to help them with their growth and with their development. And sometimes they will work alongside them. They will not be their particular guide, but they will come in and offer help and assistance. Yes, they will want to continue their work from the other side to connect with the earth again. I have a question on Reiki. Some practitioners can see spirits during uh, Reiki sessions uh, around their client or their, themselves, even guides. D does Reiki help to create a connection with the, the spirit world? Yes, it does. And any form of altered state of mind or healing will create a connection with us because we will come and join the medium that is seeing these symbols and asking spirit to come and heal. Then we will know that you want us to join you. And then the healing will take place. Now I have two questions concerning uh, ITC instrumental transcommunication. I have a question coming from a very well-known French transcommunicator named Manu Delpech concerning uh, instrumental transcommunication. He would like to know if there are guides that were specialized in this kind of contact, helping him and helping the spirit to connect and place their voice on the tapes of the tape recorder. Yes, the guide of, of him will help the other souls to connect it through these uh, points of contact that he has put forward to them to connect to, you see. So we will all come together sometimes as an energy to, to form a communication on your machinery. Mm. I would like to know how spirits can put their voice on tapes or any kind of recording device. Could you explain the, the process to us? This is well, again, the, the recording device is an, also an energy. Yeah. And, and so we use our thought transference because everything is of thought when you are just a consciousness. And, and we have an energetic consciousness. And so we have to train our, our consciousness in order to move or manipulate physical things. And, and so we will be able to create an, a, a sort of an audible tunnel of, of being able to speak through these pieces of machinery, you see. So it, it's all to do with energy. And, and we are, uh, the further we come closer to your world, the greater we can connect with it. And we do uh, tend to like electrical devices to connect to. <laughs> Now there's a question coming very frequently concerning suicide. Lots of people are afraid that their loved ones who have committed suicide will be punished. So could you explain to us what really happens to them? Well, there is a difference of, of situations because some people have near death experiences and, and they are trying to take their life, but they fortunately are saved from that. And, and they come back and say, well, I had an experience of hell. You see, I had an experience of terrible people scratching at one another. And, and they have been dragged into the, the negative side of things because there are the lower realms of spirit. There are the higher realms of spirit. Much like negative and positive on the earth, you, you do have ones that hang around in the ethers, you see. Mm -hmm. And because they were in a traumatic state, they sometimes get pulled into those particular realms before they go into the light. But not in all cases. Some go in peace. But if they are in a traumatic state of mind, they will hang around on, on, in the earth ethers and try to communicate with their loved ones. Mm. But you're not, you're not thrown into hell, my dear. <laughs> Why would a God that loves you throw you into hell? You take your hell across with you. You take all of your trauma across, you see, and it seems like a hell that you are in. But there are lower realms, 
and, and maybe you will go to them, maybe you won't. Okay. But suicide is, is not a good thing because I'm, I'm not going to uh, praise it. Yes, of course. It's better to, li to, li to live and, and get the help that you need. But some people are understood that they have clinical depression and, and they have a manic depression, they have bipolar depression, whatever name that they would want to label it as. But they are sometimes feeling beyond help, and that there is no help that they can get to because the chemical reactions in the brain are bringing on this, this deep depression. And so you are not going to be punished for that in the way of feeling illness in the mind that causes the depression that brings on the suicide. You, see, you are understood that you have a, a mental illness. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you going to be thrown into hell for that? No. Mm -hmm. no okay. But I would say before you think, if, if you feel suicidal, then I would recommend anyone to get the help straight away. I, I would not attempt to take your life, I would say that you are worthy of love, you are worthy as much as anybody else, and, and to get the help that you need, because life can improve if, if you believe in oneself. There are people out there that will help you to recover. Mm, yeah, that's a good but the people that do take their lives are assisted. They are helped on the other side. Oh. They are not scorned or unloved in any way. Oh, that's great. I have a question on earthbound spirits. What kind of spirit is an earthbound spirit? The earthbound spirit is the spirit that sometimes hangs around. It, it depends on what you want to put it as. Mm -hmm because some spirits are a little lost and they don't see themselves as having passed. They don't want to, uh, they don't want to understand that they are clinically dead. They don't want to understand that they have passed to the other side. They see themselves as still being alive, you see? So they're mm -hmm. desperately trying to cling to someone to get the attention that they want and to, to communicate. Uh, on the physical earth and they're saying well tap tap i want to communicate here mm -hmm. i'm i'm needing some help here i don't understand why aren't these people hearing me? you see yeah and why doesn't their guide help them to understand this i would say that sometimes you go through certain tests in life mm -hmm. And sometimes the guide has to stand back and let you go through these certain things in order for your spiritual growth. It is all learning about the unconditional love and going through the negative to get to the positive. And, and usually, as, as Elaine was explaining, going through the negative is getting through to the positive, the greater good. So, yes, we do have to sometimes stand back. But it doesn't mean to say that we have deserted you. You have chosen that particular point of learning and, and we have to stand back and let you learn it. We cannot impede your growth, but we are there to support you through your hard times. And we are there to support the soul that has passed. Maybe there is something that they need to learn from their passing. They will eventually come to the acceptance that they have passed and go into the light. Sometimes they are needing a little help with it. And sometimes an angel will come and say, well, this is, you are, you have learned from this. Come and join us in the light. They will accept it. No. Oh. And is there something we can do to help them on earth? Well, there are mediums that will attune themselves to helping these souls across to the other side. It's a very emotional moment when one joins the light, isn't it? It's the, the people of the earth become quite emotional because they are empathic about that soul having joined their loved ones into the light. So yes, it, it is quite a, it is not an easy task to take on because sometimes you will find reluctant negative ones, but it, it is something that you choose to do and don't choose it lightly. Okay, so that's uh, what you call a rescue medium? Well, somebody that does that needs to be strong, my dear. Yes. 
I would not recommend it to the, the light-hearted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I wanted to talk to you about haunted house. Uh, why does some spirits stay in the house and haunt? Well, they, again, it is hard for them to, to leave. Perhaps they love that house mm -hmm. in their life. You see, and, and they cannot accept that they had passed and had to leave this place. They want to hang around saying that it belongs to them. So if somebody else goes and moves into it, they may say, well, what is this person doing in my home? I live in here, but they, are, they have passed and they cannot accept that they have passed. So they, they want to get the person out. They see them as trespassing, you see, yeah. <laughs> and they try to drive them out. Mm -hmm. And so some of them become very angry and very frustrated, but they need help. But sometimes, you know, it, is, it can be quite a territory to enter into to get these sort of spirits to go across because some of them may be somewhat angry and mm -hmm. disconcerting. So I, I would not, uh, as I say again, do not take it lightly. Yeah. Uh, and in other cases, some people seem to have entities attached to their auric field, like the parasite. Could you advise us how to get rid of them? I would say that uh, it would be better to, to go to somebody that knows what they're doing in order to, to allow the attachments to step back. Mm -hmm. It is a soul that uh, attaches themselves to somebody that is uh, perhaps negative-minded or depressed in some way it doesn't happen to everybody my dear it is a mm. it's it's a rare occasion that this happens but you will find that once the soul is released away from that particular being mm. then the person becomes back to their old self again you see yeah. mm. now i have a few questions concerning guides what's the difference between a guide and a helper well, the guide is, is the main guide that is going to be there from birth until passing, you see. And, and they will be there to support you and work with you spiritually and needs be. But the helpers will be other souls that have had uh, previous lifetimes with the particular medium. And, and they will know much as there is to know about them. And, and they will specialize in different things. Perhaps one will do healing. Perhaps another will do writing. Perhaps another will want to paint through that particular medium. But they will have knowledge of them in previous lifetimes. And that is who the helpers are. And could you explain us the role of a gatekeeper? Well, again, the gatekeeper is, is not, it's not really the gatekeeper because the guide will decide who comes in and who doesn't. Mm. So I guess that you could say that we are the gatekeepers, but I would say that uh, angels are also the protectors. Oh, okay. So you could call the angels gatekeepers because they are the ones that are also there to, to keep you protected. Mm. How long does a guide stay with the same person? All of their life, my dear, from birth until death, physical help death. Okay, and helpers? The helpers will also stay there, but they will perhaps sometimes come and go. Once they have finished uh, doing what they appertain to do with that particular medium, they may step back or they may come back at a later date to do it again. And, and some don't. Uh, need to work with that particular person at all because they have perhaps progressed. So yes, it, it, it varies, shall we say. Is there a way to connect easily to a guide? Connecting to a guide is uh, mostly through meditative states of mind. It doesn't mean to say that you have to sit there for hours every day meditating. You just allow your mind to rest and, and perhaps ask the guide to connect with you in some way through the meditative state of mind, or again, showing you signs that they are around. Is there a difference between um, normal meditation and sitting with, the, sitting with the spirit? Yes. Normal meditation mm -hmm. is whereby you, you place your mind aside and you rest. Mm -hmm. 
and, and you feel at peace with oneself and you may take your mind to nice places through perhaps guided meditation or self-meditation, a form of self-hypnosis meditation. And, and you will rest the mind and relieve yourself of stress and bring yourself to a peaceful state of mind and relax. But uh, you will do something of a similarity when you are going to sit and you are going to attune yourself to spirit. You may meditate previously before you join them and start to work. You may work with them in a waking state of mind. You may work in a trance or physical state of mind. All of the, those different uh, forms of mediumship. But you will perhaps meditate beforehand in, in the way of uh, bringing them through. Is, is it useful to know the name of your guide? Well, a name is a name, isn't it? It's something that you physically require on the earth. And, and you require an identity because you, you want to recognize that identity as a name or as a, a, a physical presence in, in the way of the way that we may present ourselves in the way of visual but uh, we do not need an identification in spirit. We come to you as our previous life identification for recognition, you see? So for instance, I was Jonathan in my previous lifetime. So I will come to you as my most previous lifetime that you will recognize. But if, if you were to see us, you would have an instant soul recognition anyway. But if you don't physically see us, and, and you are learning to attune to us, mm -hmm. you would want a, a, a sort of a formal identification to relate to. Mm -hmm. So that is why we bring an identification to you. Um, I have some question concerning the spirit world. Is it true that there, there is a resting time for the soul just after that? There is usually a period of resting time, yes. Some of the souls come back as much as hours after their passing and give evidence through a medium. Mm -hmm. that they are so desperate to get back and tell the, the loved one that they have arrived safely and they want evidence that there is an afterlife, so they give it to them as much as hours. Even when they have just momentarily passed, they are able to go to a particular person that they perhaps loved or knew and connect with them and let them know that they have passed safely, instantaneously after death. And, and that is the most wonderful magical thing that we are able to do if we are that determined. But sometimes you will go to a place if you have had perhaps a long illness and you, you want to rest. And but you are not ill in spirit, you see. <laughs> so you will only go for a period of, of, of you put it on earth as rest in peace. Mm -hmm. We are at peace when we get there and, and we will be with our loved ones and, and recognizing home again. So that, that may be a period of time on your earth that seems like forever, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But you know, different spirits will communicate when they are ready, all in given time. And what our loved ones are doing on the other side? Are they doing things that they love to do on earth or are they learning new things? Well, learning is, is constant. It is continuum mm -hmm. and, and it is eternal. So you will always be learning something new in spirit. For instance, I am learning new ways to connect with your physical world most of the time. But I do like to... to uh, visualize myself riding my horse beauty and, mm -hmm. and then it becomes something of somewhat of a reality because everything is visualization and, and uh, feeling it visually and, and physically you see but because we are only consciousness most of what we do is through thought we can be anywhere that we want to be we can we can by locate and be in several different places at once because we are consciousness and we don't have a physicality to to limit us we can be anywhere but if, if a, a painter was wanting to paint and love to paint in life, perhaps they may want to paint in spirit through their thought, you see. You, you create everything through consciousness. So if you wanted, for instance, if you wanted something that you wanted to see visually in front of you, and, and I would give an example, it was a house that you loved in, on the physical earth, you could rebuild it in spirit with your mind, mm -hmm. but when you had no longer any need of it, you, it would dissipate because it would only ever be a thought. 
So it's a little bit like a thought that you have in your mind on the physical earth and you forget about it a few moments later or, or months later. No, yeah. However long you want to hold a thought in your mind, you will hold it there with your own decision. And it is the same with us, you see, but without the physical attached to it. Do they have missions? We do have missions. It's not so much missions. We, we, we learn ourselves, we decide for ourselves who and what we want to be. Uh, so if we wanted to be a guide to somebody, then we would have to know everything about them and would have had to have previous lifetimes with them in order to understand and love them. You see, so we will perhaps, uh, before that soul incarnates to the earth, you will make a, a, a pact with each other that you will work with each other from spirit and on earth at a certain point in the life when the, the physical person is ready. You see, they join the earth and you know exactly what the journey is. I would like to ask you a question on something that I experienced. So that's a little bit a personal question for me. Several times I had a visitation of my mother that passed away three years ago, among other signs that she's given me, but on three occasions I could feel her physically. Uh, I could feel her lying down next to me and I could even touch her and hug her. And I could even feel the warmth of her body. And could you explain to me how it is possible? It is possible for us to, to bring ourselves into somewhat of a physical, because if, if you are in a certain state of mind and, and you are feeling like you are awake, but it is, it is very much of a lucidity, but your mind enters into somewhat of an astral state of mind so that then we can join you in the astral and then it becomes lucid. So she is able to appear to you as a lucidity and, and physicality so that she can hold you and touch you because you have slightly left your body in order to join her in that state of mind and she will become much of a reality, you see. Yes, but we will I, come I will... from the spirit world in, into the astral and you will join the astral in your mind. Yes, you could just lay there and feel in such a relaxed state of mind that your body starts to drift into the astral where she will come and meet you and she will be able to form herself physically so that you could feel her as if she was physical again. Yes. But she is alive and well in the spirit life. Mm. Yeah, it was a wonderful gift. But I, I must point out that I was, I was awake because when she lay down next to me, uh, it woke me up, of course. But the... Yes, she came to join you and, and she created mm. somewhat of a physicality because she came in from the etheral, you see, mm. from the astral. Her etheral body became more of a physical because she joined the earthly plane again. Mm -hmm. She didn't necessarily have a physical body because she had cast that off through death, but she was able to create somewhat of a physicality. We are able to build up an energy from our world to yours to make ourselves physical. We do it with physical mediums. We become real to touch mm -hmm. because we build up an energy that is created into physical. No, oh, it was really amazing because, as I said, I could feel the, the body warm, just like she was on Earth. It was really amazing. Yes, she is a very strong woman, your mother. <laughs> yeah. Very determined. Mm, that's true. Well, I have a few questions uh, from people on Facebook. Most of them has been answered already, but there's a few, few left. Uh, someone asked, do the soul of our loved ones remain with us until the end of our life? Yes, they do. And then when you rejoin home again, they come and meet you. Mm. They are not going to desert you. They will always be in your thoughts. You will always be in theirs. And they will always keep an eye on you every now and again and let you know that they are around, sending you signs and giving visitations much like your mother did. <laughs> yeah. Another question from Facebook. Why do young children stay stuck on earth? 
why doesn't their guardian angel or guide help them? Again, there is somewhat of a learning to be done. Mm -hmm. Much like you learn and learn to overcome your fears and, and your worries on earth that hold you back in life. You have to learn how to overcome them. So you do as a soul as well. They're not going to desert you, but they stand back and let you understand about your soul's growth. And then they will step in when needs be to help you. Even with children. Yes. Children mm. are old souls, my dear. Uh, they need to learn too. Mm. Learning is eternal. But you are not deserted. Yeah. Another interesting question, uh, is there any punishment when a person helps another to pass over? No, there isn't. Because with euthanasia, mm. the, we have the understanding that the person is in such a state of suffering and, and you love them that much that you're going to help them across because you don't want to see them suffer anymore. We know that they don't want to do it. Mm. Sometimes they, they help to do it. Of course, in your world, you would be in trouble. But in certain countries in your world, euthanasia is, is a lawful thing and it is able to take place under certain conditions of uh, terminal illness. So in, in your world, in this the country that Lane resides in wouldn't be able to do that. If, if they were found out, they would be sent to prison and because they would be punished for doing it. They would see it as a... Uh, assisting murder you see so but we on this side understand the reasons for it so you will not be punished no. <laughs> Great. Um, another question why doesn't the guardian angel prevent someone from committing suicide again that may have been that soul's journey they chose to come back to the spirit world at a certain point in time and it was part of their soul's growth you see maybe they had to go through that terrible time in their lives and come to join spirit again everything is of free will so that soul may have been teaching something uh, to people on earth in the, in the way of family members or people around them that knew them how to come together and and bring other people together to prevent more suicide but it is it is I would say it's very prevalent in your world these days, isn't it? Mm. I would say face your fears with strength of mind and overcome them. Don't let them overcome you. You overcome them. Mm. That's true. And the last question, <laughs> but not the least, how are souls created? Well, <laughs> souls, there are millions and millions of them. Mm. And one soul is there, will reincarnate several times. So uh, again, if you wanted to put it as a, a sort of a little bit of a, a chuckle here, you recycle yourself. Because <laughs> I guess you could say you're a recycled soul, but there are millions of them, and there are thousands of millions in populating the world. But a lot of these souls are coming and going with, with gusto, and, and they are coming back. And, and there will be a little less of that happening before long. Mm. Because uh, a lot of these souls are overcoming certain things and they are raising themselves in. in all of these lifetimes that they have lived. Mm. And, and then they will go back to spirit world and stay there a little longer that next time. Mm. So a, a soul is created, you would call it a, a star seed, wouldn't you? Or did this star seeds? Mm. But a soul is always there in spirit. It just chooses to incarnate. No end, no beginning. Mm. But you would say, well, if you give birth to a child, that is a beginning of new life. Mm -hmm. That soul has been here many times. So, yeah. yes, eternal. No end, no beginning. Exactly. Just existence. That's beautiful. Well, that was the last question, Jonathan. And I thank you very much, really very much, for coming and answering to, to all these questions. You are most welcome.
But remember, yes. all of the souls are part of the, the higher power. Mm. They all stem from that, you see? Mm. Yes, I see. That has always been there. Mm. Yeah. Dr. Shaw. I've always been sure of that. <laughs> Hello, Ellen. <laughs> Welcome <Hello>. back. <laughs> oh. Yep. You all right now? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you talking about your mother cuddling you, and um, yeah. one night I, I wasn't awake like you were, I was asleep mm -hmm. in, in like a, a, a dream state, and it seemed very real. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother held me in the hospital bed. She cuddled me from behind and wrapped her legs around my legs, around the back of me, snuggled together in this side ward. And I said to her, I don't want you to, you and dad to go, mum. And dad was still living at that time. And she said, oh, it'll be all right. And then I woke up. No. I felt her to me and she was cuddled right up to me as if to say, well, I'm here for you. And it was, it was lovely. I'll never forget that. That's true. Yeah, me too. That's really a beautiful gift. Mm. It is. Oh, yeah. And I could really feel her, really. She was warm. Oh. She was solid. <laughs> that was really amazing. Mm. Oh, you're very lucky. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Really. <laughs> So, Elaine, uh, we can find you on Facebook that you were saying at the, at the beginning. Uh, what's the name of your page? Spiritual Wisdom? It's, uh, I think it's Elaine Thorpe, Trance Medium Spiritual Artist. And, and my website is elainethorpe.com. Okay. And you my have a Facebook page, it's just Elaine Thorpe. Okay, and you also have a YouTube channel with a lots of wonderful videos. It's called Ellen Top. That's right, yeah. Okay, and you also have a Twitter and an Instagram. Yes, my my son deals with that. Um, technology, I'm not very good at there, so my son probably puts things on Twitter and he uploads things to YouTube for me. Because I'm I'm not good with that sort of thing. No, he, I'll leave that to him. So Twitter and Instagram, he deals with. I haven't posted anything on Instagram for a while, so you you probably won't see um, any of my up to date paintings on there. You'll see them on my Facebook page on my main one. Okay. Yeah. I will put the links then. And uh, well, otherwise, uh, do you have some projects? Um. Well, I, I have some demos and sometimes people ask me to, to do these demonstrations and my son sometimes organises demonstrations. We're hoping to do one in London this year at some point again because the last one I wasn't very well and, and we couldn't go through it. So he's hoping to set that up again for around March and uh, see what's next. And there, there will be others. Um, I usually put them on my facebook page so keep an eye out for them okay okay then well i thank you very much Helen. it was such a great pleasure to receive you and jonathan maybe one day um, you will come back <laughs> if it's okay with you yes uh, yeah <laughs> if you have other questions it would be really uh, great <laughs> oh well, thanks for having me on and uh, it's lovely to meet you no, for me too. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And you. 
and I'll speak to you again sometime. Yes, with lots of pleasure. Goodbye. Bye.